welcome back once again. Another mealworm episode for you. Today I need to sort out some pupa from the mealworms, so I want to take you along for the ride, show you what I've figured out that's made that a little bit easier so that you can use this in your own systems. I'm going to set up a little bit of space where I can get access uh, from both sides. A little board over some chairs will do. We've got one bucket full of our mealworms, one to put them into, a bucket for the frazz, a little container for the pupa, and the sifter, of course. Grab a scoop of your mealworms, and then sift and sift and sift and sift and sift and sift. And what you're going to be left with is the frazz. Well, frazz and a couple little mealworms that end up making their way through. We'll put those guys back inside. Pour out everything that's left in the sifter, which is your mealworms, pupa, wheat, and your dead worms, and then spread it out. You don't want anything to hide. This lets you see everything at a glance. These are what you're looking for. This is a mealworm pupa. Kind of cute, isn't it? You can see they wiggle. And those are the ones you want to keep. Some of the mealworms are already starting to sort themselves out. Give you a little push. Boop. While you're sorting out for pupa, there are a couple things you want to keep an eye out for. The first thing is for size. Different mealworms are going to end up as different size pupa, and the bigger the better. Those are the ones you want to keep. You also want to keep an eye out for dead pupa and mealworms. These are a more black color. You can see the live mealworms on the right and the dead ones on the left. Dead ones go into the graveyard. Another thing you might find are these half-colored ones. Those are dead. So is that one. So we've sorted out all the pupa, getting out the last little bits of dead stuff, and then all of this, which is a little bit of frazz, and then some wheat and lots of mealworm. That's just gonna get swept down into our next box. You see anything else dead along the way? You can just grab it out. Once you've got all your mealworm swept in, tidy up the dead stuff and drop it in your graveyard. Now grab another scoop and do the whole process again. I like to keep track of how many pupa I pull out. Usually I put them in bins of about a thousand. All right. So now that the mealworms are done getting sorted, I've got to sort out beetles from some of our other bins into our main grow tubs. Hmm. Look at all these guys. This is more like it. I also wanted to show you guys a few pupa that I found while we were sorting through here. And you can see it does look like the mealworms ate it out with that hole right there. And that looks like a hole I've seen mealworms make in carrots. I did go about a half a week longer than I usually go um, before sorting these out, so they may have ran out of food um, and started cannibalizing each other. So I'm going to try to check on them a little bit more often next time and we'll see if we have quite as many die off or get eaten like that. So this is a pretty easy process. Pick them up. 
drop them over. That is a good chance to examine. Make sure the wings are well formed, that the abdomen is well formed. You can see there are some that get a little bit of deformities. I'm okay with wings sticking out like that. What I try to watch out for are ones like this that still have a tail of pupa left. Now some of the beetles, for whatever reason, will sometimes turn out like this. And you can see the beetle is alive, but the tail end never emerged out of the pupa. I've been taking those beetles and putting them in with the chicken food because I don't want those genetics to propagate on through the rest of our, our worms. Now here in this bin we used another style. And so far I've got to say I like this one a little bit better. The beetles are coming out nice and clean. You can very easily see if anybody's got weird growth or deformity. Kick right in. It's very easy to spot the ones that are ready to go since I don't have to dig through any substrate. So looking between the two mealworm bins so far, I'm liking the one that uses no substrate and is just piling in as many mealworms as we can. Most of these we're packing with about a thousand. If you tip the bin on its side at an angle, the beetles almost pour themselves out. You do end up with some junk, but that's easy to pick out.